Hello everybody, so welcome to Tuesday's Tea at the Ritz. Um, so today, instead of my crowning glory, which is my normal hair, I have what I like to think of as my clowning glory, um, my wig. I did tell you a few weeks ago that um, I was thinking of buying, a, well in fact I'd ordered a wig because I thought if I get absolutely desperate and my hair looks a terrible mess, maybe I'll want to, uh, to pull on some kind of alternative which uh, would allow me to go out and feel okay. So this came, um, I did show it to you in a, in a short video which is on Super Troopers um, two or three weeks ago and I haven't worn it since. And I just put it on today because um, I want to discuss hair health with you and, um, and also the possibility that uh, you might want to consider <coughs> wearing a wig if you, uh, if you ever have a problem with your hair that uh, leads you to think that that is going to be desirable or necessary. Um, it's taken me about a half an hour fiddling around with this wig to get it looking halfway decent. It's not easy. You don't just plonk it on and it, it immediately looks okay. And um, I'm in very big two minds about it. I think it's okay, but I'm not sure that I would actually... Um, well, of course, if I had to, I would definitely consider wearing a wig, but um, I don't have to at the moment. So, uh, as I said, I'm very definitely um, in two minds. Now, the thing that will stop me having to wear a wig, um, unless I, you know, I'm unfortunate enough to require chemotherapy for some kind of cancer treatment, or um, I have uh, something called alopecia, which ends up with me not having any hair at all growing on my head, then um, I think I'm going to do everything in my power to ensure that the hair that I do have is in its best possible condition um, and that I look after it really well. And that's really what I want to share with you now. Um, clearly, there are some extreme circumstances when, um, as I said, through uh, a drug treatment or through alopecia, um, you might need uh, you might need a wig, but in the meantime, you've got this stuff growing out of your head and it actually will pay you to look after it really well. So, what am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about the fact that we need to be aware that the, the, the hair that comes out of our heads ends up uh, being dead protein. It's not actually growing and living as a substance outside our body. It forms in the follicles on our scalp and it's in the formation of the hair in our follicles that we can affect by things like lifestyle, diet uh, and so on. It's when it comes out of the follicles and grows into hair that we then have to make sure that we really look after it. So let's start with the whole idea of how do you get the best possible quality hair that you can have in the first place. So the first thing to say is that our, our hair is a very real and very true barometer of our overall health. Because um, our bodies don't prioritise the growth of hair, they don't see it as particularly important, if we have any kind of health issues, then the, um, if you like, the nutrition that we're taking into our body will be prioritised towards those vital uh, organs that we have and everything else before our hair. So, you know, hair can go hang as far as our bodies are concerned. And that is why if we're not in very good health, our hair will suffer and it will look, um, well, it will look dull and lifeless and, uh, and maybe start to drop out, which is uh, the most alarming sign that thing, not, not all is well. So how can we ensure that uh, our health gets, uh, our hair gets everything that it needs? Well, the first thing to say is that diet is critical to that. Um, if we eat the right foods in the right um, balanced quantities, then hair is going to benefit from that. And what I mean by the right foods, I'm talking about a diet that has to be rich in amino acids, which is basically protein. So meat, uh, quality fish like oily fish, um, any fish, but oily fish is particularly good when you're older. Uh, eggs are good. Um, so having every day sufficient protein uh, is very important. And then there are certain vitamins and minerals that are desperately important um, to how, how well our hair actually um, grows. So vitamin six, uh, B6, B12, iron and calcium are all the things that make the big difference. So if you're deficient in iron 
or deficient in the amount of calcium that you've got the, that, that you're ingesting or you have lower levels of B6 and B12 that are required they're going to impact on how your hair looks. Um, also there are certain illnesses like an underactive thyroid gland that uh, thinning hair can be a first sign of that and if you're younger polycystic ovary syndrome um, is another thing that leads to uh, problem, problems with um, hair loss. Um, the way that you live your lives as well uh, has an impact so smoking big no-no excess alcohol uh, isn't very good for you generally but is also not very good for your hair and um, pregnancy and menopause are two times in our lives when for various reasons again our, our, um, our hair is not prioritized by our bodies and therefore it can suffer so if your hair gets very thin after you've had a baby as mine did and if it also starts to thin when you're going through and after the menopause then don't panic it is part of the natural process of the changing hormone uh, balances and so on and so forth and there's a very good chance that it will ultimately recover although after the age of 60 it may never recover fully back to how it was when you're younger and that can be um, unfortunately true that we we may lose up to 50% of the volume of the hair on our heads uh, from the age of 60. Now the other thing is that once we have formed the hair successfully and healthily in our follicles by ensuring that our diet is, is good and that we're not doing any of those lifestyle things that is likely to damage it, it we owe it to the hair that is growing, uh, that has grown, uh, to look after it. Because the hair on our head, heads lasts for about three years before it falls out. Uh, but that's a continuous cycle. Obviously it doesn't all fall out at once every three years it actually falls out at around the rate of 100 hair, hairs, individual hairs a day and that is going on week in, week out, month, uh, month by month and so on and so forth. But if you notice that there's a lot more hair clogging up the plug hole when you wash it and you're also noticing that you're shedding a lot of hair when you brush it and so on and so forth, that can be deeply, deeply scary. But it could just be a sign of something called wait for it, Latin phrase, telogen effluvium. Now that is the normal outflow of the hair during the telogen or resting phase, which lasts for about three months. Now, if you do notice a lot of extra hair coming out, it could be that you're just having this shedding, normal shedding of hair, and it can be cyclical and nothing to panic about. So what you need to do is just grit your teeth and just say, okay, this is happening, it's quite a normal process, and within about six months, it will stop and it will, it will uh, you know, your hair will thicken up again. But it's never a bad idea if that is happening to you to seek medical advice and help or go to see a trichologist. Now, the reason I say that is that sometimes a simple blood test can determine whether you do have some kind of a, a deficiency that needs to be addressed, like low iron levels or something like that, or there is some kind of underlying problem that needs some kind of medical intervention. So although you don't want to be bothering your doctor, especially at the moment, with uh, apparently trivial things, if you are worried about your hair, seek help because early intervention is critical in some cases. Although, as I said, it is quite usual and quite normal for hair to shed cyclically um, and, and then for that to stop and for everything to be okay. So treating your hair well, how do you do that? The first thing to say is that uh, you have to look at what can potentially damage your hair. Um, shampoo, let's start with when you wash your hair. Some shampoos are quite harsh on hair. Um, buying a sulfate-free shampoo can be a good idea, as can buying a shampoo that has actually got certain oils in, like almond oil or jojoba. Um, so again, you can, you can be adding to the quality and condition of your hair by the products that you're using and the quality of the products. I particularly like Aveda um, and I use a, an Aveda conditioner which I really like and they are all very natural pros, uh, um, uh, 
um, products. The other thing is that when your hair is wet, it's at its most vulnerable. It's most likely to snap and break. So using a nice wide tooth comb to, um, to comb through the conditioner or to get rid of tangles. And, uh, and if your hair has become um, very matted, perhaps uh, before you wash your hair or when you've applied something like conditioner, then just be incredibly careful with it because if you tug on wet hair, it can, it can break or you can pull it out quite easily. Um, the other thing about uh, wet hair is that if you start to blast it with very hot air from an over hot hair dryer or you use um, heating implements in order to style your hair, then again, you're going to damage that poor dead keratin uh, protein that hair is made up of. And of course, it's not going to recover until the new hair grows out through uh, through your healthy, one hopes, follicles. And, um, and, and what you might have to resort to do is to go and get it cut really short to cut off the hair that you've damaged because you've treated it badly. So all of those things are really worth thinking about um, when you're when you're washing your hair and also when you're blow drying it. Now I've talked about the natural outflow of um, shedding hair, which uh, we can all experience from time to time. Um, the more serious is if you start to notice that your parting is getting a lot wider or your hair is definitely thinning around the front and uh, the alarm bells start to, to, to ring that you might um, you might have alopecia. Now alopecia is obviously a much more serious um, condition and um, again early intervention, early treatment can make a lot of difference to that but the ultimate result of alopecia can be that you do permanently lose your hair because the follicles literally have stopped producing any hair whatsoever and in that case you may then want uh, some kind of alternative. I think most women find uh, a wig that suits them and works for them. And I want to hear, give a mention to uh, Trevor Sorby. Uh, he was somebody I consulted and talked to um, at some length when I was writing my book, um, Living the Life More Fabulous, and the chapter that I did on for that on hair. And he's a, he's an in, a very interesting guy. You, rem you might remember Trevor Sorby from the, the 1960s and 70s when he was a, when he was a top London hairdresser, um, along with Vidal Sassoon and John Frieda and people like that. And um, you know he was a fantastic hairdresser, and he has a ha he has a salon still in Covent Garden. But what uh, he has devoted himself to over the last few years, very admirably, is a charity which he calls My New Hair. And um, he he was so concerned about the psychological impact and damage done to women when they lost their hair that he decided uh, to set something up which would help them. So he um, he created this charity and consultancy. So women who um, are at risk of um, alopecia or who are going to lose their hair temporarily because they're going to have chemo, they can go and talk to him and he will advise them on the best kind of wigs for them to buy. And then he styles those wigs and makes sure that they fit perfectly um, around their head shape and also uh, for their faces and so on and so forth. He's an absolute expert. And he's also set up a training program to help other um, hairdressers do the same. Uh, all around the country. So I think that's worth mentioning, but there are other things that uh, you can do if you do lose your hair. There are turbans, there are scarves, there are interesting hats and so on and so forth. And I guess the, the people that survive that situation best are the ones that, um, that actually uh, play with that and have some fun with it. And I've certainly seen um, on a few occasions women out and about um, and proudly bald um, and just say, you know, almost making a statement with it to say, OK, this is how I look, you know, get over it. Um, and I'm full of admiration when people are able to do that. So my wig is a bit of fun. I'm choosing this wig. It's not um, it's not something that I'm having to wear. Um, I'm quite glad I don't have to wear a wig, I have to say, and uh, it's really made me aware, if I wasn't already, um, just how important it is to look after the hair on your head and make sure that you don't treat it harshly and that you do everything in your power to nourish uh, it, nourish your body, which will in turn lead to a nice healthy head of hair. So I do hope you found that useful and helpful and um, 
and that you will give some consideration to that next time you're yanking your poor wet hair through with a with a nice big bristle bristle brush and uh, and doing a lot of damage in the process so thank you very much for listening and um, i should look forward to seeing you tomorrow uh, when we're going to have another delicious tea at the ritz bye bye everybody